I'm Lily, and I have a story. But before I begin, there are three things you need to know. One, comedian Chelsea Peretti said you're either from a vomit or a shit family. And what that means is, when you're little and you tell your parents that you feel sick, they either tell you to throw up or go to the bathroom. Let's just say, I don't throw up. And the god-awful truth you have to come to terms with as a shit kid is that you can throw up at school and you'll be okay. It's gross, but people will get over it. However, if you poop your pants in the middle of class, you better be dead within the hour or crossing the border because you will not recover. You live your life on a razor's edge. Two, a few years ago, someone started a rumor that girls don't poop, which I think elite my ladies can attest is pure conjecture. However, what is not conjecture, what I know for a fact, is that that someone was a certain camp counselor named Jean. <laughs> Three, I had food poisoning. Who poisoned me? I don't know, probably Jean, it doesn't matter. I just think it's important for the group to know that this isn't something that just happens to me. Okay, so I was at camp, it was Saturday, and that meant that it's rec day. And so my group was about to go on the 10-mile Indian River hike. Now, I understand that for a lot of you, 10 miles just isn't that bad, but try pooping a solid five of those 10, and you'll see things my way. <laughs> so we're going, we're making good time. About a mile out, I start to get this feeling, this little whisper of an idea, that my stomach and my brain are on fire, and I'm going to die. And something in the force had shifted, and I realized that Reg Day was gonna get a little crazy. But in that moment, I realized something else that I had to persevere. Because gosh darn it, I'm from a family. I haven't had everything handed to me. No, I have to fight to win my battles. And that's exactly what I tried to do fight. Did I win? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> um, uh, it, it was really more of a participation medal type situation. <laughs> but I tried. I mean, I really, really did. Like, I remembered that when you have food poisoning, uh, you need to drink a lot of fluids because, like, you're losing stuff. Um, but you're not supposed to do that before you've lost the stuff because that makes you want to poop more. And like I tried talking to my friends and looking at the gorgeous flora and fauna, fauna local to the area I was in, um, but friends are dumb and I definitely had a low grade fever. Uh, so all the green just kind of started to trip me out. Uh, but eventually we got to a clearing where we were told to rest and me in my delusional fog I thought, oh, okay, sitting down, this will solve my problems. <laughs> oh, how wrong I was. Uh, <laughs> all sitting down served to do was push the fire up further into my body. And then we had to stand up, and I don't know if any of you have done the trick where you like stand on a tin can and you poke the edges in, and then it like crumples. Well, standing up was the moment where the edges of my ego like poked in a little bit, and then my can would meet its demise about a mile after that when a counselor shouted, okay, you guys, that's five miles, we're halfway there. <laughs> yeah, so um, I pulled off to the side with my friend and we flagged down a counselor. Who can tell me who that was? <laughs> who has a guess? Jean. It was, yes. It was Jean. Um, now, honestly, I probably shouldn't be, I shouldn't talk crap about Jean, <laughs> wordplay, um, because honestly, he was a pretty good guy, and he was just trying to do his job, which was keeping me alive. But you know those people, and everything they do is just, just wrong for the timing and the place, and they just don't know an audience. Like, for starters, the guy never stopped talking. Not once, as I would drag my lifeless corpse off into the woods to be violently ill, it was just a great decrescendo and crescendo of Jean. And 
That's not all, because the gene conversational timeline is as bizarre as it is indiscriminate. Yes, I do have a thesaurus. Um, <laughs> and, like, here's how it went that day. Hi, I'm Jean. Let's talk about the root of homophobia in our society. Then I'm gonna let it slip that I, Jean, am two years younger than the counselor age minimum, which is 21, meaning I'm the same age as everyone at this camp. <laughs> but then we're gonna bring it back with a 10-minute interlude on my favorite musician, singer, songwriter, St. Vincent. <laughs> but then we're gonna, I'm Jean, so I'm gonna hit you with the fact that I'm hanging out with the camp flute instructor, but she's like six years older than me, so I just don't know how to feel about that. And then we come way down. Let's talk about our hobbies. I like Smash Bros. And so that's, <laughs> nerd. Um, so that's how it was for the five mile trek back to the camp van. And when I was told to write this story for my class, we had to decide like what changed about us as a result of this story. And mostly I live in constant fear of Jean finding out what I've done. <laughs> but I also, <laughs> I also realized that there are two parts in me. There's the part that is like smart and can do stuff. And then there's the part that tries to drink water before I've had explosive diarrhea. <laughs> And I think we all know who's in charge. Thank you. <laughs>